So this is what I get. I don't watch wrestling for a couple of weeks. I don't talk about wrestling for a couple of weeks. I don't do videos about wrestling for a couple of weeks. And we get Jinder Mahal as the WWE champion. Let that sink in for a second. Jinder Mahal, WWE champion. Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Jinder Mahal. Something seems to be just a teensy weensy itsy bitsy bit off with this picture. Let me get the, let me get this straight. Jinder Mahal, WWE champion. The same Jinder Mahal who a couple of years ago was so valued that the company put him in a jobber faction called 3MB, where he was playing backup to Heath Slater. Backup to Heath Slater! Where he was so successful and managed to get so massively over that he eventually was let go from the WWE. The same Jinder Mahal, mind you, that is brought back, who all of a sudden is gassed out of his ass, and ultimately serves as Rusev's jobber bitch. Rusev's jobber bitch! So with really absolutely no buildup whatsoever, absolutely no previous history of this company giving any bluest of blue fucks about anything that they do with Jinder Mahal, somebody took a look and said, you know what I see? I see money. I see WWE Champion. Is this what the fuck the WWE has come to? Jinder Mahal is the WWE Champion. This is why the brand split is so fucking eminently stupid. Because it creates more spots that need to be filled in a company that already significantly lacks and severely lacks for big time stars and true legit main eventers where we're plugging Roman Reigns into the fucking void and we've got idiots clamoring for Finn Balor to fill the freaking void. It's because of the brand split you have to have two champions for every freaking belt. You gotta have this brand has a world champion, so this brand's gotta have a world champion. Well, if you already have a lean roster in terms of actual big stars and superstars, ultimately that's going to mean a bunch of guys who have no business touching a world title indeed touch a world title. Now, you could give me that shit about, oh, you're always talking about building new stars, and here they go. Not everybody should be world champion. Not everybody needs to be world champion. Not everybody can be world champion. And just because a face is different, just because a name is different, just because it is someone different than somebody else is not nearly enough of a resume for them to be WWE champion. That's the ridiculousness we use to elect presidents in this country. We for what we argue is the most important job in the world, always elect the least qualified, least experienced person. Now we're getting to the point where the WWE is doing the same damn thing. They are putting the least qualified, least experienced people as the world champions. Jinder Mahal! What about Jinder Mahal, other than steroids, indicates to you that this is a guy you can make real money with. What about anything in Jinder Mahal's body of work with either his first run or his second run in the WWE indicates that this is a guy that you can do things with, indicates that this is a guy that you can make money with, indicates that this is a guy that you want representing your brand. To me, when you're talking about making a guy a world champion, there are different tiers and levels of world champion, I grant you. There are those franchise guys. There are those transitional guys. But ultimately, if you are confident enough of a guy, in a guy to put a world championship title around his waist, on him, 
That means you have to be prepared for him to be able to main event any show or be a headline act for any show up to and including WrestleMania. What the fuck would make anybody in WWE think that Jinder Mahal is qualified to headline WrestleMania? This is the stupidity of this company. This is the ridiculousness of this company and the current state of the WWE today. You did all of that crap with Bray Wyatt to have him win the title just so that way he could job to Randy Orton. So that way Randy Orton could drop the strap to freaking Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal! Who throughout his entirety of WWE runs has either been the backup bitch for Great Cowley, the backup bitch for Heath Slater, or the backup bitch for Rusev. Now he's supposed to be the headline bitch? Unbelievable. Just because a face is new doesn't mean it's right. Just because you can make somebody a world champion doesn't mean you should. Not everybody should be a world champion. Jinder Mahal, you could really argue, has no business being WWE champion. This reeks of desperation, this reeks of many things. Now, that's the type of reaction you would normally expect out of me in this type of situation. And to be fair, I feel pretty much all of what I just said is true. It kind of is. But let's look at this from a different color lens, a different perspective. When you look at WWE now, there is a clear problem in terms of a lack of star power. Frankly... When you look at so many other guys, what's the difference? And I mean it truly. What is so fundamentally different from a Jinder Mahal to a Roman Reigns, a Jinder Mahal to a Rusev, or a Jinder Mahal to a Seth Rollins, a Dean Ambrose, a Finn Balor? What is so fundamentally different that would make him so much more eminently more or less qualified than any of those guys that I named and so many others? You know, you can talk about preferences, you can talk about this, but there really isn't a lot of fundamental difference. So in the grand scheme of things, what difference does it make? On top of that, you were talking about a Jinder Mahal. Canadian born or not, doesn't matter from the WWE's eyes. They see a guy with that pigment and automatically assume, to India! Which, from a business perspective, as the WWE continues to see its domestic audience dwindle, there is an ever-increasing emphasis and importance placed on producing strongly uh, in the international markets. And if you're talking about Indian international markets, India is the second most populous country in the world, behind only China. So it would make sense, as a global entity, somebody who needs to increasingly produce on the international markets to maintain a certain level of profit, it would make sense to appeal to that market as much as you can. From a business standpoint, putting Jinder Mahal at the top as your WWE champion validates him. When you advertise him on future international tours, especially into places like India, you can build your entire event around Jinder Mahal and have him as a current or former WWE champion. It elevates the profile of the company. It elevates the profile of the world title belt. Uh, Jinder Mahal, who will be loved and adored in this type of market, is going to be a current or former champion when you do these tours. Also, you need something different every once in a while, some shock value. So let's face it, Jinder Mahal being the champion is shock value. That doesn't mean it's good, because one of us could run out in the middle of a ring on a Raw or SmackDown and take a big demon hulk of crap right in the middle of the ring. That shock factor, that doesn't make it good. It doesn't mean that you draw money with it, but it doesn't mean I guess you can't either. So when you look at Jinder Mahal, it is something that is so, so shocking to the system, him being a WWE champion, that maybe it jolts people into thinking or believing that things could be a little different. Things could be a little better. I also look at this from a perspective of, you know, we have had a fundamental, absolutely fundamental cycle of 
stereotypes and prejudice and racism throughout WWE. And I have talked about for so many years how much the WWE lacks credibility, among other things, because of their over-reliance on the white athlete in terms of the North American sporting landscape. When you look at sports in particular, such as football and basketball, that are dominated by the black athlete, you cannot sit there and try to, as your product is shifting towards being a more athletic reality-based product, build yourself around the white athlete. There are certain stigmas that go around being a white athlete, fair or not. Let's face it, it is what it is. And this company for years has been negligent behind the wheel in this matter. So I look at a Jinder Mahal and say, well, granted, he's not a black American. He is also not a white American either. He does actually look different. So when I think about him as a champion, it can potentially, potentially, probably not, but potentially open doors for others, such as Nakamura. Another segment that has been grossly treated by the WWE over the years, Asian wrestlers, the Japanese wrestlers in particular. If Ajinder Mahal has a successful run as WWE champion, it would, in my mind, make the WWE a little more open and a little more willing to run with a guy like a Nakamura as the top guy for one of their brands, as a former world champion, along with some of the other Hispanic, Mexican, black wrestlers in the company. So it can potentially have some positives in terms of shaking up the pure look. Besides just the anabolic look, it has the ability to change the look of the WWE top scenes. Probably not going to happen, and I'm living in a fantasy land, let's be honest. But it could. But when you think about it, and you think about Jinder Mahal being WWE champion, the simple truth of the matter is, one way or another, it really doesn't fucking matter. Be honest. People bitching about Jinder being WWE champion are either not watching because of shit like that and they're still not going to watch, or people that are watching that complained about it are still going to watch anyways. And people that like the decision to have Jinder Mahal be the WWE champion probably are not going to be any more likely to watch anymore not be any more likely to really spend any more money on the company or the product, what difference does it make? And again, when we talk about the WWE specifically, ever since the days of Rock and Austin and the Attitude Era as a whole, especially when you had Rock leave and Austin leave, and then a couple years later you have Brock Lesnar leave, these were guys that the company devoted a ton of resources to, a lot of effort, energy, and money into, and they didn't get the full ROI that they would have liked, would have anticipated. So there's been a conscientious shift, in my opinion, over the past 12, 13 years to create guys that you can use as props, that you could put in certain spots that aren't so big in terms of their star power that they become bigger and better than the company and get tempted to go pursue greener pastures elsewhere and go do other things. This company will maintain a certain, mind you, at least domestically, ever-shrinking audience, regardless of who the champion is. You look at Raw, Brock Lesnar is the champion currently as I'm recording this, and it doesn't matter because he's not there most of the time, so that's not helping the product. And even when he is, in a lot of ways, he's become exactly what I talked about, which is the wrong type of draw, and he doesn't really make much of an impact or a difference in terms of eyeballs on the product anyways. So if a guy that's a former... NCAA heavyweight champion, former UFC champion, former multi-time WWE world and heavyweight champion can't sit there and impact it significantly. What does it matter if Jinder Mahal does or not? The simple fact of the matter is the belts are props and the company utilizes them and the champions as props. And if they don't like one guy, they just put another guy in there and they don't really lose a whole hell of a lot. Like even when the people want to talk about Roman Reigns killing Raw, you know, to be fair, he's not the only one. It's part of a bigger picture, and he's not even the champion right now. But it really doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? Whether you think the title reign's good or not, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to make a star out of this kid. Nothing's really going to change about the product. 
It's just more of the same old shit from WWE, believe it or not. 